This is real stuff which I do think will change lives of families. And it's also a step towards that cure for diabetes. Yeah. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about type 1 diabetes screening. Um, and this is an area that is really gathering pace over the last couple of years. And it's more of a discussion really around the topic because I think we're going to be hearing a lot more of this uh, over the next year or two. So type 1 diabetes is very different by the fact that it's an autoimmune condition whereby the body is essentially attacking its own uh, insulin producing cells in the pancreas. Um, and it's not a condition that can be reversed or cured uh, as we stand at the moment. And so therein lies a difference with type 2 diabetes, which tends to be more related to lifestyle factors and has a reversibility uh, to it as well for certain people. Um, and so type 1 as a diagnosis, which tends to be diagnosed either in childhood or young adult life, can have a massive impact on the person, can't it? You're absolutely right. And of course, it's not just childhood and adolescence. That's, yes, that's certainly more, much more common if you're developing diabetes that it's going to be the case. And in many ways, that's easier to pick up clinically. But as people get older, they still can develop type 1 diabetes. So it's a common clinical conundrum. There are, unfortunately, some really sad tales where it's not being picked up in a child indeed uh, where because it can be difficult sometimes to pick up uh, the, some of the symptoms of type 1 diabetes particularly if an inexperienced person is is managing it and so it's it's an important condition to get right because if you don't get it right they pre present with a life-threatening condition that is diabetic ketoacidosis and so it can end up on ITU and as I said and unfortunately some people die uh, from this uh, condition and even simple things we often talk about SGLT2 inhibitors now you're not giving those often to children but but in in adults you are and in, we're encouraged in the nice guidance to give it very early these days and again if you're not quite sure if you haven't got your diagnosis right that can be quite disastrous because those treatments are much more likely to cause ketoacidosis in in people with type 1 diabetes so it's a really important diagnosis to get right um, um, so yeah it would be great to know who was at risk that I was seeing. So important to get the diagnosis right, but also really important to get it right early as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Because of this almost, um, you know, very rapidly developing condition. And as you mentioned and alluded to, by the time at the moment, a lot of the time when we diagnose type 1 diabetes, it's through the symptoms that have already presented yep. and the complications are already starting to kick in. Um, and it becomes quite an overwhelming scenario for the, the person living with it and their, their family as well. No, I think your uh, uh, point is, it's, uh, you speak to anybody with type 1 diabetes, they are traumatised at that diagnosis almost invariably because it is quite a traumatic event. You, you go into a, a clinic or you might be going into A&E, but then you're suddenly whisked into hospital as an inpatient. You're started on insulin almost, well, from day one because you, you, you need it at that point because it's a late diagnosis. If we compared that with other conditions, you, you know, you, you, you would consider this as a late diagnosis, particularly as, you know, we know the processes start some time before then. Yeah. And so when we talk about uh, screening of type 1 diabetes, we have some uh, data from Diabetes UK that suggests actually screening may actually pick up uh, the diagnosis up to 10 years earlier, yeah. which could really revolutionize the, the management and yeah. prepare the person and their support network for something that, that's coming up. Yeah. Um, when we talk about screening, we often refer to the WHO criteria for screening. And without going into the nitty gritty of it all, when it comes to type 1 diabetes, I think there are a lot of the criteria mm. for screening that are being ticked off. One area that perhaps is still a little bit of a grey area is what do we do once it has been picked up through screening? What are the management options? Uh, are there any curative measures? Uh, and I think that's still an area of research and development and uh, evolution. I think that's fair. I mean, that's fair. I, you know, the, but, you know, we, we, there is some movement here to actually delay that progression, which, which whilst not a cure... Um, at this stage, and I know there's a lot of work going on looking for cures, um, uh, but but it it, it certainly it, it can again give more time to prepare and to have time 
uh, with better glucose control because you're preserving the, the pancreas uh, or the insulin production uh, uh, pr uh, capacity of the pancreas. So, so I think I think things are changing even on that WHO criteria, um, and it's a, an active area. But I suppose it's it's you know if there's a genetic test, then I mean who we who we testing? I mean it's um, so you know. Who's at risk? Exactly. And who is at risk? Well, obviously, the, the, the easy answer to that are family members of people yeah. who have type 1 diabetes. Uh, so that would be a very obvious group to, to, to screen. Yeah. Beyond that, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, uh, what, where do you see screening going in terms of is it just an open to everyone? Does everyone in a pediatric clinic get screening? I think I, so. I think in an ideal world, because let's face it, there are more genetic conditions than just type one diabetes. So, yeah. so I think uh, it, there's a potential opportunity because all all um, patients, certainly in the UK, will all um, have a heel prick. I had a heel prick when I was a baby a long time ago, but um, and and everybody does now, and that's traditionally been picking up certain conditions under active thyroid gland or. PKU and, and these uh, um, and, and that we're rolling out cystic fibrosis screening. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, so it's just a logical extension, I think, of that. And and I think that's important because the majority of people, although you've identified a really high risk group, and that's you know, bang for buck, you would get it with that. But but it but in truth, majority of people who develop type one diabetes don't have an immediate family member yeah. with type one diabetes. So so it's it's it would be. For the reasons we've said already, I think it's it'd be really useful to have that. I mean, there are a whole load of moral issues which go on about, you know, having that information from an early age, particularly if it's mm. children who can't give consent. So so it, it, it and, and we are particularly if we're looking to screen for type one diabetes, there is this issue about consent. But, you know, as I said, I think we've also got to look at the harms and, and that inability to prepare someone for what is we, we will happen and may happen and of course there's also the broader issues that yeah you might say someone's at risk but of course that doesn't mean the process has started yeah exactly and i was going to come to that that the screening tools that will be used at the first stage are genetic testing and so getting a positive result there doesn't mean that it's yeah. that does not equal type 1 diabetes so then that's going to be followed by a barrage of other investigations looking at autoantibodies uh, and really an assessment by you know a specialist team um, that will then potentially start quite a, a long journey uh, for the person. And I know the University of Exeter have been you know critical in this and actually helping develop uh, a lot of the testing, a lot of the yep. risk calculations around this, um, even helping um, develop some of the home test kits that are now available, where yep. you could order order at home and, uh, and 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 assess your genetic risk, isn't it? So yep. it's more than just that initial test, isn't it, Patrick? Absolutely, and I think, and as you say, if we if this process is going to happen, it's going to involve, well, pretty much everybody, I would have thought, in healthcare, certainly paediatrics. Mm -hmm. But, of course, if we're, it depends how, at what scale you're going to be screening. But, but it, and, and then even if you've identified someone at risk, are they going to be under a specialist? They have, they've got a risk, but they've not got symptoms. I mean, yeah. we, we're forever managing people with risk of heart attack through raised cholesterol. They're not all under a specialist. They're generally managed in primary care. Mm -hmm. so, so I think there's, and as you say, it's, it's another one of these areas which is just feels like it's about to explode. So mm -hmm. we're, we're maybe just, you know, thinking a little bit, oh, this is all for the future. But you, the future can, as we all know, with technology, and this is a technology, will we'll come to us much quicker than we're probably expecting. And if we don't prepare for it, 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 it you know, that it causes challenge. Absolutely. You say that because in the USA, they're perhaps a few steps ahead of us, mm. aren't they, uh, over here in the UK? So they are actually embedding screening programs into some of their pediatric clinics and community mm. centres. So... Uh, we've got a keen eye, and I'm sure a lot of UK diabetes uh, have got a keen eye on what's going on in the States mm -hmm. and how they're managing some of these uh, people, young, sometimes older, who have been identified as having a higher risk 
what do you do for those potential 10 years or so yep. before they may go on to develop type 1 diabetes? So that's going to be really interesting. And I know there's a lot of research going on in the UK as well. Again, at University of Exeter being one of the, the driving forces behind that to, to understand uh, and, um, and analyse uh, people who are being tested uh, for their risk of type 1 diabetes and then potentially being involved in, in management programs to, 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 to address that. No, no, I, I think it's, it's a really interesting from a science perspective. But I, as I said, for having looked after many people with type 1 diabetes, you just have a chat about their journey. And it's, it's not always a happy tale. And so anything we can do to improve that and, you know, and there, as I say, we, if we can do it at scale, so there's lots of ifs in all of this, but if we can do it at scale, can you imagine a time where people are not presenting with diabetic ketoacidosis in terms of, of their initial presentation? And maybe with some of the other technologies we're talking about in terms of, uh, you know, CGM, insulin pumps, hybrid closed loops, you know, again, reducing those uh, diabetic ketoacidosis and it's, you know, which um, can be a devastating uh, thing. Although it leads on to my one little um, thing I was really good at when I was a junior doctor was my nose. I could sniff out the ketones in diabetic ketoacidosis. I was, I was, I was, I was like a sniffer dog for this and I've carried on trying to sniff out good evidence and I think this is... This is real stuff, which I do think will change lives of families and, and you know, really. Um, and it's also a step towards that cure for diabetes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So it's one of those scenarios where we've got screening available now. Now we've really got to make a move with the management. And yeah. that really opens the door for the pharmaceutical industry and research really to, to, to drive into that. Uh, so there's a lot of hope. And I know that's yeah. something that you always focus on quite importantly yeah. in diabetes. And especially with type 1 diabetes, this really does feel like it's a moment, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I do. Um, so uh, thanks, Patrick. Always great to chat to you. I hope you found that really interesting. Um, as uh, we've both said, there's more to come of this uh, and uh, perhaps it's not so much the future, but really is encroaching on our present now. Uh, we hope you uh, enjoyed that. Uh, feel free to reach out to us across our social media platforms, uh, like, subscribe, comment, uh, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Take care.